All right, so today we're going to create a PDF um, presentation. You want to go to the output tab over here. You see I have Essentials, Film Strip, Metadata, and Output. We're used to working on Film Strip most of the time. Um, I did go to Window and I deselected the folders and the files so that I could give myself some more space to record this. Um, here you see I've selected by doing a command click on the images I want to make the PDF gallery out of today. And we're going to do, um, uh, let's see, today we're going to do a maximum size. And out of that, we're going to go down a little bit below the template and we're going to say international, I mean, say uh, web gallery. It says 640 by 480, but we're going to go 800 by 600. And anytime you make these kind of changes, any kind of changes to your um, template here, as you work down through these, you can twirl this close. So you can see the next one, or you can pull up and down on the scroll bar here to the right. Uh, here I want the web. I know the size. I, I know the quality. It will convert your RAWs into JPEGs. Here's your quality. That's basically your clue that they're converting them to JPEGs because you can see that's 70 percent. We don't need any um, passwords here. So let's close document settings. We got those. Um, the way they have them set up here, what we don't want to have is rotate for best fit because that'll flip any of our images on their side and we don't want them to flip on our side. So we're just going to take that off so all images are just as we see them. We're going to flip that closed. The header, if you want your name to appear at the top, you can mark it as a header. Um, you can choose the color of your text, which might be white, or you can actually choose a color if you think it would work well with what you're doing. It just really depends. That looks a little intense for me. Um, I think most of these colors are probably going to be pretty intense. Uh, but you can do a custom color, but that's not a big deal. Let's just go for white for now. If you do increase the point size, you have to increase the distance of your header in pixels. Same thing goes with your footer. So in other words, if I do go with a, let's just say a 22 point font there, then down here I've got to use 22 pixels for my distance. If I don't do that, it'll keep giving me a warning, uh, which is quite a confusing. I'm gonna put my name in here. I don't recommend this, I just offer it in case you're doing a presentation and you want it to have your name on it. Now, when I enter information like this, every time I enter information, I can click on Refresh Preview. It'll actually process the slides and show me what they're going to look like. So right now, I have my name on white at the top and I have a file name at the bottom. My name at the top in white is fine because I actually want to make the background um, black because I don't like the white which is actually down a bit here somewhere uh, or I passed it on the top I'm not sure uh, yeah maybe I did under document is that yep background white I want that to be black once it goes black I'm gonna hit refresh preview again there we go now I see my name and that was in my header I'm going to go back to my header because I actually want that to be centered if it's going to be my name. I could close that. Probably should refresh it first. There's my name in the center. Uh, footer. I don't want a footer in this case, although my name could go at the bottom if you wanted to. What I would like to do is I want to make sure the playback is set to open in, in full screen mode. Uh, automatically advance the next page. Five seconds is fine and even loop after the last page because if I make this as a PDF slideshow and I want to put it um, on a computer for somebody that maybe everybody's walking around they're gonna see it like a kiosk or something like that then it can just keep looping I can give it a transition again you can try that out if you want um, those are all good settings for me watermark watermark is where you might put a copyright so in this case, if you use the option key and the G, you get a little copyright symbol. And then 2013, 
and then put your name and that way you're copywriting um, your images if you want to uh, color wise I'm going to say a custom color because I actually want mine to be gray which gray is actually selected right here that's about the gray I want I'll close that box I clicked on that little cube there to pick my color um, and the other thing I want to do let's see size is okay is the offset because horizontally I want to offset it um, I would say I think I did a I believe I did 80 and 95 and I might have done these backwards we'll find out real quick and let's see if we can do a refresh mode on that Yep, it ended up way up here, so it's actually the opposite. I actually want this to be about 85 or so, and this one to be a minus. Uh, I don't think it was 100, I think it was about 90, something like that. Refresh. Yeah, it puts it down this corner right here, so vertical offset could bring it down a little bit more. It might even be 90%. Horizontal should be a little bit less, maybe 80 and refresh preview so you see what I'm getting is a nice light gray copywriter watermark um, vertically it went down a little too low so we'll bring that to about 90 something like that I can type these in here if I wanted to um, and horizontal I do want it to come over a little bit more refresh the preview Oops keeps jumping around let's start with one at a time let's take this one back a little bit to 80 or 82 work yeah that puts it about right and then I want this to drop down a little bit more but not too much maybe 95 we'll find out not 98 95 let's try 95 yeah that looks good it could come a hair more to the right which means probably 85 was perfect let's try 84 then doesn't want to move too much there you go so you see I've got a light gray watermark that says copyright 2013 West Lindbergh I have West Lindbergh photography up here um, I can close that because that's my watermark uh, I click the view PDF after save It'll only view properly um, in Adobe Acrobat if you, if you open it in preview, which is what happens if you find it and just click on it. Uh, it won't play the same, or you can open it on the web. So if we click save, it's going to ask us where do we want to put this. I'm going to put it in Project 7, my web gallery, and I need to give it a name. Man, I can call it uh, West Lindbergh PDF. Um, you can actually give it Project 7 PDF if you want, which in this case I've got a, a space for that already. Um, and I called it version 1. So I don't know what version 1 looked like. It's one of those that I built before. I'll call it version 2 and save it. I just have to remember that. But it's going to pop open. It's actually not going to show on this movie completely because it's going to go full screen. Um, I did say remember this and so you won't be able to actually see it play properly because it fills my screen you might see part of it um, it's cutting part of it off but at least you can see that what I see is mostly a full black screen with a little watermark down here uh, it is extending a little bit more out there but that's just because I didn't go full size um, I can pull it down into my window here and you can kind of see what it should look like something like that except that it goes full screen black you see it has the name right there and I can use my arrow keys now when I'm in Adobe Acrobat to just jump through my photos everyone has a little copyright on it everyone has my name at the top so that's pretty much what I was looking for I can quit Acrobat and go back here and say well you know I don't really like my name on the top there. Let's take my name off the top because I already have the copyright. It's nice and subtle and this is kind of bright and blaring. Let's refresh the preview. Take a look at it. Yeah, that looks a little better. I'm going to take that away. It actually gave it a little bit more room. 
Uh, I'm going to click Save again. I go back to my proper naming convention. I call this version 3 now and say Save. It's again going to go through it and make it full page, full screen. Takes up my whole screen there. I'm hit the escape key to get out so that I can bring it back down and give you a little better idea what it looks like. Stretch it out here. It looks really good in full screen mode. Uh, now you can see the copyright. I don't have my name. The black kind of disappears there. And then I can just use my arrow keys and flip through it very quickly and make the presentation. Uh, it will also work in the browser. Um, if I open a browser and take a look at that, let's go to, uh, we'll do, uh, we'll try Google Chrome because I don't know what it'll look like in Google Chrome. And why not just see what it looks like in Google Chrome? I would think that'd be fun. All right, so Google Chrome, I'm going to have to resize the window a little bit so that you can see it. And this is just in case you're going to put it on a web server and use it as a present presentation on the web server. You do uh, you'd have to do a file open, open a new uh, file, and we'd have to find this one. Which good luck. Hope you have uh, really good file naming uh, conventions and practice. Good file management. This is Fall B, this is PGY, uh, let's see, Project 7 Web Gallery, Ooh, good thing I named it that. There's version 3, let's see what it looks like. Alright, so in um, Chrome, this is what it looks like. It actually displays as one after another and you scroll through them. Um, I think, I'm not sure if I can jump down through them or... No, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it's giving me some navigation, up and down arrows. That's what I was looking for. It, it didn't work right away, but it does. It's a lot easier just to scroll on my pad. So now you can see it does have the watermark. Put them on black. It's displaying it on a gray page, which is fine. But they look good on black, I think. If I was building a website, I'd do it a little bit different. So basically, that's how you create a PDF presentation in Bridge. You can also do the same thing in Photoshop. If you open all your images in Photoshop, uh, you simply, while you're in Bridge, you just go File. While you had them all selected, you go Open with um, Adobe Photoshop. CS5 did not have the um, PDF presentation option. So I'm on CS6, so fortunately they brought it back. But if you happen to be on CS5, you probably won't see it. Um, it opened all my images very quickly, which is what it's made to do. So now we'll have to resize this one again so that you can see what I'm doing. Bring it back into your movie window. So again, I'm in Photoshop. Now I have them all open. And if you want to create it in here, you go to File, um, Automate, PDF presentation. Again, this would not show up on CS5, but it is here in CS6. Looks similar to what we did. Um, I don't think you have as many options. You can do your background. You can click presentation. You want to add open files, which are the files that I had selected to use. Um, you can put some title on it. You can put your um, what's your shutter speed and things like that. We're right there. Um, I don't think it's going to let me actually put a name, a text name, it just lets me select something here. It does show a copyright, but it doesn't tell me any more about it, not at least there it doesn't. And again, my options are fairly limited. Um, I can make it advance, I can give it a um, transition if I want. When I click save, it's going to go to a place to ask me what it is. I'm going to click on the one I had there just so I can say make this version 4. Click Save. Now it says what do you want to do in here for your uh, PDF and basically it's just if it's already a JPEG don't down, down sample 
if it's already been compressed as a JPEG, I don't want any compression then. Um, output wise, I don't think I care about that. Uh, I'm not having them make them any smaller, so I'm using them as the size they were. That's really all I have to do. I save my PDF. Um, I don't remember if I checked to open it or not, but that may be an option there. And if not, then I just go back to um, wherever my file was, which was actually, where's my file? I guess I closed my window there, didn't I? Hmm. Why did I do that? I don't know. Just so I go through my, you can see my beautiful file management. Um, B. PGY 20 to 1 C project oops, I mean project 7 and this is version 4 so now if I right click on this and say open with Adobe Acrobat not and then it says OK you can see I got a very similar thing it knew that I produced the photo so I put my name in there um, it does have my exposure, which is kind of cool for the presentation. Now you guys probably see some of it, but it's being cut off a little bit at the top of the exposure just because of where I put my video window. But otherwise, they're on pure black, so they look really good and they're full screen. And it just simply has my name and it has exposure for each one of my photos, which is kind of cool because, um, especially for our class, everybody would know what the settings were. So. If you do it this way, I would go ahead and, and make that uh, show up like that, which is a great idea. Again, if I bring this down into the window, you actually see what I'm talking about. When it goes through each image down here, it's actually got the, that this was shot at 1 uh, f1.2, so it's wide open. Uh, 1 is relatively slow. So his shirt was in focus, but he turned his head slightly, so I got a little bit of soft uh, focus on his head. But you can see the shallow depth of field. Go to the next one. That one there is 1 500th because my kitty is extremely fast, and catching her in action takes a really fast shutter speed, so I use 1 500th of a second at f2.0. Here I actually was going a little slower. I got a little blur, a little soft focus, but um, it was kind of happened really quick because the lizard she was chasing it and I just quickly took a bunch of photos and luckily I had a close setting uh, otherwise I might not have set that some of these other ones one two hundredth uh, of a second which didn't really matter there's one thirteenth five point six um, this actually had this is actually was a um, HDR so it's using the settings from one of the parts of it, it appears 1 320th and 1 60th at 1.8 and there's 1 1 25th 2.0 so again uh, you can do this in bridge or you can do it in Photoshop either one um, I think that bridge gives you a few more options but both of them work all right hope you enjoyed it